Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Happy Friday. It's that time of the week, our Move the Stairs Friday chat. And Diana, it seems like it's been one wild week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it has been. You know, but I think we're saying that every week right now. So, and I don't know if next week is not going to be just as wild, but that's okay. So we're so glad to see all of you. Thanks so much for joining us. And for those who, of you who are joining us for the first time, this is our Move the Stairs Friday chat. If you're listening in, every Friday we have a great conversation about brand protection strategies, and we tackle a number of different topics to help you and your businesses get through some of the biggest PR challenges that you're going to find in 2020, we know has been one heck of a year for that. So we're excited for you to join us today. Diane, what are we chatting about? Well, today we're going to talk to CBD business owners about how they can grow their following and over time create a, a, a really loyal customer base, which is one of the first things you want to do for brand protection. And by the end of this episode, um, they're going to be able to integrate digital marketing with their business PR plan. And I think that's really important because when you think of the peso model, the, the P in peso stands for paid. Mm -hmm. And that's something that you really need to do and getting those customers to be loyal raving fans is huge when it comes to brand protection. And I think you're going to find later in this episode, there's a lot of compelling data that's brand new that's going to show you how much of an opportunity there is here in 2020, despite all of the COVID-19 stuff, to really reach out to your customers and your target audience to turn them into loyal customers, or at least begin them on that path. So uh, before I get too far down the rabbit hole, Diane, like we always do, We'll break this into our three mini conversations. We're going to be first talking about what is digital marketing. And, you know, we're going to be talking to those people who maybe haven't done it before. If you're just trying to get into it, understanding, wrapping your brain around it and how you can integrate that digital marketing into your existing CBD business and continue to grow. Then we're going to get special uh, and specific strategies from our special guest who's going to be joining us. Tatiana McDaniel. She is the CMO of Happy V. She'll be joining us a little bit later in the conversation. And then finally, we're going to be talking about how you can continue to grow your social media strategy and your digital marketing strategy in spite of the pandemic. How do you keep that positive momentum going without things slowing down? We're going to give you quite a few different uh, options you can choose to keep that conversation going amongst your target audience. And for those of you who are watching or listening to us and you don't have a CBD business, you're going to be able to use these strategies as well. But we are going to be focusing a little bit on CBD today as well. So if you're joining us live, we want you to please jump into the conversation by answering this question. What is your most pressing digital marketing question? Because we want to pose that to our special expert um, and put that in the comments section. If you're joining us later, go ahead and post your questions or comments. We'll either answer them next week or we're also happy to answer them on email. So just let us know. There's also a free downloadable one sheet with every episode. So make sure you grab that on our mnccommunications.com website. It's in our Move the Stairs blog for this episode. So let's get started. Yeah, for sure. And I wanted to uh, let everybody know what that downloadable is going to be because I, I didn't put it in your copy. My bad, Diane. But it's going to be um, kind of your cheat sheet of uh, what is our monthly content calendar. So you're going to use this and download it and it's going to help you divvy up you know, what content that you have so that you can have a robust and really targeted social media strategy is you're working toward growing your target audience and eventually that brand loyalty. So we wanted to dive right in here. Uh, topic number one, what is digital marketing? And you know how can you convert what you already have happening within your PR plan to incorporate digital marketing and grow that CBD business year? So according to digitalmarketer.com, Digital marketing is defined as the act of promoting and selling products and services by leveraging online marketing tactics such as social media marketing, search marketing, and email marketing. Why is this important? You know what the study shows is that um, from 200, from 200, from 2012, <laughs> how old am I? No, from 2012 to 2019, uh, the average person worldwide spends, are you ready? 144 minutes a day online and specifically on social media sites. 
that's two hours and 24 minutes. And so we're talking like two and a half hours here. Can you imagine that? It's crazy. I, I can't imagine that because I, <laughs> well, I wonder if it counts. Imagine like, it, can't we? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I wonder if it counts, you know, if you have Facebook up kind of in that tab window, but you know that there are some people who literally spend two and a half hours scrolling Twitter or, you know, at, at different periods of time, but it adds up. It really does. Well, and you you start scrolling, and the next thing you know, you look up, and you've already lost thirty minutes right there. So, and if you're <laughs> commenting, I mean, you know, we have our Twitter list that we're constantly following reporters, following our clients, following potential clients, and commenting. That can literally. The other night, I spent an hour and a half, um, and and I only made it through three or four of my lists. So it is something that can be very time consuming, and you have to be very smart in how you're. Uh, managing that time and making the most of it so you can uh, have an effective social media strategy. And you know that it's funny you bring up how much time people spend on social media as a whole. We've talked about Facebook at length on our Move the Stairs right. Friday chats, Diane. In spite of, you know, the movement saying we're going to ditch Facebook, yada, yada, 15 years later, it's still the most popular social media site that's available to us. In fact, most people on average spend 38 minutes per day on Facebook. And keep in mind, they have 2 billion active daily users, which are close to it, which is crazy. Um, but that's a lot of eyeballs, right? I mean, it's a lot of people spending time online. So why wouldn't you use that opportunity to try to put your products or in our cases for MNC or services in front of those people's eyeballs? Right. It's really part of an internal growth strategy. And I can tell you that um, with COVID, one of the things we did is we made our company a client. So not only do we do this for our clients, but we're now doing it for MNC in a very focused way. Um, and to tell you the truth, we've never been so busy in how we're doing this and it is paying off. And that's the key is that you build those raving fans. The other thing is that it really is the new way of business development because what we found, especially during COVID, is that while people may be holding back a little bit because they don't know what's going to happen with the economy and all that, people are ready and you may not know exactly when they're ready for PR or for your CBD product or maybe now they, they're ready with anxiety, they want to try it. You just don't know. So to be top of mind and to be educating and to be talking to people and really um, constantly giving back with what we're doing today, that's exactly the type of thing that we're doing today, is a great business development strategy as well, so that when they're ready, you're top of mind, they're gonna call you, they're because you have built that trust bucket with the fact that you're an expert in your specific area, and that's really, really important. So one of the things that we've done is we've looked at uh, different things that we could, educational and professional development, products that we could actually buy and things that we could do, learn, take. Um, and one of them is the BizHack Academy, which is where we met Tati, who we're going to be talking to today. Um, and this was all on social media marketing. And they taught us how to do the Facebook ads. They taught us how to do the LinkedIn ads. Um, they taught us how to take our skills to the next level. So we were boosting and we've been following and we've been commenting, we've been doing all those types of things, but this is a whole new level for us because as PR pros, we're more interested in the reputation side, but as a PR company, I have to make sure we're also marketing, right, Jordan? I mean, that's really important. Yeah, it is important. And, and if you look at you know some of the data we're going to dive into a little bit later on in this conversation, there are a lot more people. And this shouldn't shock anybody because we can all look at our own habits and say, how much time have I spent online since, you know, um, oh, COVID hit? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? like, there's nothing more to do. You know, your social engagements have been canceled and, you know, Zoom became a pretty big thing, too, with people socializing over Zoom. But that's still online. So our habits have inherently changed because of what the COVID-19 pandemic brought to us. And with that, you know, there is an opportunity for people to grow their brand through that change. Right. And Absolutely. that was one of the yeah, things that. Yeah. What's that? Yeah. Said it's, it's really one of the ways that we're now connecting that um, we were connecting before. Absolutely. Because right. we gave those numbers, but even more so now, because that's our outlet for a lot of people. 
And um, right now we're we're recording this in the beginning middle of November, and mm-hmm. the the reality is that the COVID numbers are going up, and everyone is saying stay at home even more and have again go back to that very limited contact, that human contact. So this is one of the ways that people do contact and they feel like they're connected. And that connection we all know is so important just for the human psyche. And you have to make sure that you know the best social media practices and that you also know who you're talking to and how you're defining those uh, target audiences. We worked with um, a a lady named Cammie Hughes who was over at Smart Social Secrets. She's just fabulous and she's, she's got this down and really helped us. Um, really hone in on who it is we're talking to and what it is we're doing and how, you know, providing not only education, but community for other people is always really, really important in building those raving fans that are going to be there no matter what changes. Um, Because remember, it's not whether or not many times, whether or not your company is facing challenges, it could be your industry is facing challenges and all of a sudden you're the one who your local media wants to talk to. It could be your community's facing challenges. And so people are looking around to see who are you and what you stand for. You want that already out there. You want people to right. already know that, right, Jordan? Yeah. And it's one of those things where if you take what you have available to you for free, which is going to be your social media platforms, and you start to incorporate a really targeted branded campaign or strategy to put out a consistent cadence of information or education uh, to your target audience or other people who may be checking in on your social media platforms, that's going to elevate you Um, at least through the eyes of your community, not just your customers, but your local community as well, and may help very well position you as a thought leader as, you know, these things may be impacting your industry as COVID-19 is making, you know, wild rampant changes across all of our habits here. And it starts with what you're doing online. So we look at what we have happening in 2020 with a big slowdown um, in the economy. A lot of people have been furloughed. A lot of people have lost their jobs. And I'm sure as a business owner, you may be watching or listening to this. Uh, You may have had to make that difficult decision, but it's here that you can take that opportunity like Diane did with the MNC. She could have laid me off, thankfully. She did not. (laughs) (laughs) No way. way. Yeah, right? Knock on wood. Um, But instead, we looked at some of the time that we had available to us and say, okay, what can we do to continue to learn? What can we do to develop ourselves so that as things start to bounce back and we kind of learn how to deal with this whole COVID thing, um, we have an opportunity to position ourselves to really service our clients in a way that we've never been able to do before. Absolutely. And you know, one of the things that you just said was cadence. I want you to define that for people because we use the content cadence vernacular all the time. What exactly does that mean? So when I'm saying a constant cadence, I want you to picture your target audience and who you're going to talk to, and you are speaking in their language, right? So if I have a target audience who's millennial, um, and maybe they live in the Northeast, I'm going to use wicked, right? Because that's just, <laughs> it, it's a, uh, <laughs> it's, Such you know, a Boston uh, word. yeah, exactly. It's slang that, you know, encompasses the entire Northeast. So wicked cool, or, Hey, check out this wicked, awesome product. Um, You want to make sure that you're speaking to them in a way that, you know, they can connect with and you're doing that on a consistent basis so that they're not confused. You don't have one post going out that's, um, you know, kind of inside baseball and then other posts going out that's, you know, um, all all I can think of is the SNL skit where um, I forget the actor's name. He's got the skateboard over his shoulder and he's like, hey, kids, you know, and he's older. He's got the backward hat. Anyway, if you're watching, please chime in and uh, let us know what that is because I God, can't remember his name. But anyway, you get the idea. So, you know, make sure you're connecting them uh, with them in a way that they can understand. And if you're struggling to figure out, you know, what should you put out there? I think, Diane, it's important to look at what's available to you right now. And that's one of those things that's available is our downloadable, the content calendar, right? Because (laughs) the nice thing is that you can figure out what we call buckets are. So what's your theme going to be every day? Um, And that can be, you know, you can have three or four themes a week, which already starts 
just getting your head in the in the space of looking and thinking of things oh that'd be great to put in there on that specific day also people want different types of content so mm -hmm. if you're a cbd company maybe you have educational content one day maybe you have inspirational content one day right um maybe you're going to have um very scientific content one day. So you want to figure out what the buckets are that are appropriate. If you're in the, the beauty space, certainly you're going to want to have beauty, but think of beauty. You could have one day for face. You could have one day for skin. You could have one day for makeup. Um, what if you're in the, the vet CBD, right? The veterinarian CBD space. Then one day you could do dogs and one day you could do cats and, you know, and one day you could do birds. I don't know. But the, the point <laughs> is that you want to think about that. And then, Jordan, let's talk a little bit about the metrics that you're going to use so that you can define your success, because that's really, really important. Yeah. You know, first of all, you have to establish a baseline. So, you know, before you dive in headfirst and just cannonball into the deep end here, um, look at what you're seeing already on your website. You know, what's your top website view? Is it your uh, bios page where everybody gets to see your smiling faces? Is it your products page? Is it your homepage? You know, what is it that people are looking at so that, you know, if you can look at that data, say from, um, I, you know, basically from the start of the pandemic, because that's where we really started to see that shift. Right, people, great baseline there. Yeah, exactly. Um, spending more time online. I think that's a great way to measure your success as you're trying to implement some of these digital marketing strategies. Now do the same thing for your social media too. Um, if you have Facebook and Instagram, uh, I think those are going to be your probably top two because Twitter is kind of a hodgepodge. You know, I, I see more kind of information on Twitter than I do people um, selling things. And I can tell you right now, I've never clicked on a Twitter ad ever in my life. Facebook and Instagram, though, they hook you so quick. Absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> so, so I have to ask you a question. Can you hear my dog Tucker in the background here? Because we have packages being delivered and he's barking up a storm. So if you hear him, I apologize for that. But um, the truck is just about to leave and Tucker will stop in a minute. <laughs> so we really want you to evaluate your company's pillars and work those into your marketing plan. So what are your pillars? So things like what are your top website views? What are your best selling products? What else are you offering your audience? Is it education? Is it community outreach? Um, is it inspiration? What is it? And, and get that baseline. And, and if you haven't started, now's a great time to start. But if you mm -hmm. did start, go back to March, end of February. Get a baseline from there. And you can really look at those numbers. And Facebook, if you're on Facebook, Facebook will help you with those numbers. And if you're on LinkedIn, they'll help you with those numbers too. Right, Jordan? Yeah, exactly. And you know, if you can take what you have already, and most companies are already going to have this kind of working in their existing PR plan, all you have to do is really use that same, you know, content that you would use in your traditional marketing or your traditional PR plan and start to shift it into more of a digital way to convey that information to your target audience. So I, I think, Diane, you brought up a great point of, you know, are you offering education? Um, are you offering something scientific? You know, what type of community outreach if you're really active in charity? I mean, my goodness, right. that is That's absolutely um, social media gold. People love that stuff. It's really important to just kind of make that pivot. It's not too, too difficult. You don't want to overthink it and reinvent the wheel here, right? Right, exactly. And you don't want to spend hours and hours every week because we know you don't have hours and hours right. every week. So that's really important. I would say though, spending the time to get it set up, saying I'm going to take a week and this is what I'm going to focus on, or this is what someone in my company is going to focus on for a week. And then Give it a little time and see how it's working so that you're able to massage it a bit and, and tweak it and make it even really start to sing. Then move on to the next thing because there are literally, I know of 20 things that you can do when you're looking at that whole marketing mix. Don't try and do them all at once. Figure out what you can do that's going to have the most impact for you. And one of those things that we believe it has the most impact are the Facebook ads or the LinkedIn ads. If, it's, if you're B2B, it's probably more LinkedIn. But if you're B2C, then definitely you want to look at Facebook. And that's what we're going to be talking about in our next segment. So go ahead, Jordan. 
Yeah. So we want to know in the comments, tell us, you know, what's been holding you back? Is it because you've seen that 20 list of things and it's overwhelming? Is that why you haven't made that step to integrate digital marketing into your PR plan? Or if you have introduced digital marketing into your PR plan, where have you found success? We want to share your story with everyone who's watching and listening with us each and every Friday on our Move the Stairs Friday chat. And don't forget, we also have that free downloadable. It's for the month of November 2020. It's a content calendar so that you can list out your ideas in what specific areas that you want to post your social media content. Um, and you can organize that so that you have that, as I said before, that consistent cadence, your voice speaking to your consumers uh, each and every day, which is really, really important. So I just put that in the chat. Um, so that should be popping up shortly. Great. Looks like it's there. So Diane, really quick before we pop on to topic two, what is Move the Stairs? What is brand protection for people who are joining us for the first time? Oh, great. Okay, we'll do that really quick. Move the stairs mm -hmm. is looking at a situation, figuring out instead of saying, what if, oh, if only had this, if only it was this way, look at what you've got, really think about it, be as creative as possible, and come up with a solution. So the quick story is, I was for the, I had a field produ producer position for the first time, happened to be Senator one of Senator McCain's many re-elections, we knew he was going to win. When I go into an election night, I go into the ballroom and I look and there's a riser and this is where he's going to be giving his acceptance speech. And in television news, getting the candidate first is all that matters. And it's certainly what your bosses care about. And this was my first time out. So I had to win. But when I looked, we were completely out of position. We were on the wrong side of the podium until I looked at the stairs. And the stairs that were bolted into the podium, while they led to my competition, they had these big bolts. So I unbolted them and I moved them to my side. I moved the stairs and we won the night. We try to do that for our clients in everything that we do. What is that one thing? Maybe no one else has thought of. How creative can we be? We think about it hard enough, literally 95% of the time, we can come up with a very creative solution that puts our clients in a better position to be successful in whatever it is that they're doing. And I have to tell you, it's this philosophy for my life as well. What can I do to make whatever it is better? Um, and right now during COVID, I've been doing a lot of moving the stairs. So, <laughs> 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 All right. So we are so excited to go to our second segment and introduce our special guest. Jordan, can you pop up, Toddy? There she hey, is. There she is. Hi, this is Tati McDaniel. She's the CMO of Happy V. She is also a biz hack coach. And we talked about biz hack at the beginning, which is this premier educational digital marketing um, company. And if you have a chance to ever work with them, Tati was our coach. That's how we got to know her. And she, you know, we threw the kitchen sink at her with <laughs> questions and ideas and what can you we do? <laughs> yeah, so Patty, tell us a little bit about you and about Happy V and what you're doing with CBD. I think that this is very exciting. We're so we're so grateful to have you here. Absolutely. Well, first of all, Jordan, Diane, the entire MNC team, thank you very much for having me. Um, I am a fan of yours, just like you guys seem to be a fan of mine and of BizHack. Um, so what do I do? Um, a little bit about my personal background. I've been in the advertising industry my entire career, um, traditionally on the agency side. Um, and this year, as a matter of fact, during COVID, which is, sounds like the craziest thing, I decided to totally do a career pivot. So I didn't do a total 180, but now I'm working on the marketing side of a business that I part own with some partners of mine, and that's Happy V. So I lead up the entire marketing department of that company, and we manufacture nutraceuticals and women's wellness products specifically. So, so you oversee all areas of marketing from strategy and research to media investments, public relations, and everything in between. And Tati, so you know, last week we talked about the difference between PR and marketing, but how they complement one another and how you really have to have a mix of the two, right? Don't you agree? A hundred percent. You can't have one without the other. And it can make all the difference when you're facing whatever challenges your business is going to face. I mean, I think that's really important. So 
you believe that by studying and understanding the customer journey, the needs, the pain points, um, that you can really develop and incubate a team to create ideal products for your customers. And then once you, while you're doing that, you're building a reputation for your company at the same time, right? Exactly. That's so exactly. can you tell us, you know, what are your top three strategies right now? So when it comes to digital marketing, I think a lot of the strategies are similar to just regular marketing or traditional marketing as some of us like when I went to school, digital marketing wasn't even really a thing. So you still needed a UFL or a, or a .edu um, email address to even have a Facebook. Right. So, um, so for me, when I, think, I went to college, there was no such thing. As <laughs> we won't talk about. We didn't even have email. So, <laughs> we didn't even have email. so <laughs> you got top line though, that. right? Yeah, really. I mean, it was manual typewriters and ripping wire when I went to school, but that's a whole other issue anyway. <laughs> and phone books. So. Oh my gosh, and phone books. So, so the reality is, I mean, in the last couple of decades, things have changed tremendously in the marketing and advertising space. And so I think the number one strategy that you have to have as a digital marketer is more of a mindset and less of a strategy, but you always have to be learning. Yes. Because I will tell you this, 90% of what I work on, the platforms that I work on, what I work with today, I did not learn in college. Right. It was right. not part of the curriculum that I was taught. Um, understanding my audience, understanding my products, USPs, the unique selling propositions, those strategies were. And I don't think those are ever going to change. It doesn't matter what platform you're on. Um, but definitely being able to pivot quickly and to understand new trends is definitely critical. It, it's mandatory. If not, you won't succeed in digital marketing. But uh, didn't we call that the biz hack mentality? I mean, you have to look at it and say, mm -hmm. this is going to be fun. Not, and I will say, there are times when we were going through the course when I thought, oh, this is not fun. <laughs> this is like, <laughs> holy, right, Jordan? Right, you and I were like, oh, we can't even breathe right now. Did you feel right. the same way, Jordan? Yeah, I mean, if you, uh, just flashing back and I'm getting like, <laughs> scaries uh, over it um <laughs> trying to get into the facebook manager you know facebook <laughs> business manager and um getting the black screen of death and we're like what is happening right now course, you know somebody throw us a lifeline account. tati throw us a lifeline <laughs> exactly i mean having having the the thing that i love because you do have to have the mentality and when you are desperately trying to learn this stuff and then you hit these walls having a coach having a mentor that you can go to. So yes, you're Googling like crazy and that's really important because you got to learn how to learn it on your own as well. But yep. there are those times when you hit the wall, right, Tati? And you and have that some that person that you can talk to is huge. Yeah, yeah. And like I always say Google should be your number one research. But what happens a lot of times too is you'll get conflicting information or believe it or not, these platforms are changing so quickly. What you might right. find is outdated information. Right, and which so, is what happened to us, right? I mean, on mine, yeah. I, I ended up in that Facebook manager business suite that is in beta yes. and no one else was in it. So yeah. everything that was on Google was wrong and it, it, it took us almost two, three weeks to figure it out so that we could get in and actually do what we were trying to do. But luckily yep. you were there you know, working with us, trying to figure it out too, supporting us, saying, oh, here's some, and, and and the other thing is, there's always something else you can work on if you hit the wall. Would you agree, Tati? Yes, that's true. So I think, you know, number one, in terms of what your strategies need to be, top three things. You have to be able to pivot and learn quickly. Um, another thing that's always gonna be, in my opinion, the most important thing, and I think Jordan, you alluded to this a little bit earlier, is understanding your audience. So put that hat on. Now all of a sudden, I'm my target audience. What is my day-to-day -day like, day-to-day -day look like, and what do what are the pain points that are alleviated by the product or the service that's being promoted and advertised to me? And then the reality is on, on digital platforms, 
the third most important thing is that customer journey, but where do they navigate now in terms of the interwebs, right? Um, Diane, you mentioned this. If it's a B2B type company type business like MNC or MNC is, then you're definitely going to want to be on the LinkedIn's and you're going to want to get in front of C-suite executives, in front of decision makers from the business perspective. Um, but if you're a consumer product, um, like D to C, direct to consumer, right. then you've got to start thinking a, a, a lot more specific, but a lot broader as well. So, you know, I wake up in the morning and what do I read? What news outlets am I on? Um, what brands and products do I use aside from the ones that you're marketing? Right. Because that's how you capture that audience. Absolutely. You know, um, earlier this week, Hemp Industry Daily published an article that I have been beating my desk about um, for at least two months, Jordan knows this, um, mm -hmm. regarding the fact that boomers are the market that many CBD companies are missing. Now, I'm a boomer. So, yeah. okay, guys, stay with us here, even though I'm a boomer. Um, <laughs> I'm a boomer, and I use CBD three times a day at least. Um, and now my dog uses CBD. Um, mm -hmm. And even, Tati, for your product um, with women's wellness, Mm -hmm. When you're a boomer, you have different issues than women who are Jordan's age, who are right. in their 30s, right? It's a whole different thing. And then we have Sarah, who is off today, but Sarah has, um, Sarah's in her mid-40s. She's got two kids. Her issues are completely different. And we're all using CBD in different ways. So mm -hmm. separating that target audience so that you know who you're talking to, but but it's not just somebody who's 21 to 65 because right. we look at things completely differently. Would you agree? Yes. No, I completely agree. Um, so, and that's a good point because the, the beauty of digital marketing is that you can get so sophisticated in your segmentation. And, you know, when I, when I talk to students, even when I spoke to you guys, there's the theory of the low hanging fruit. Right. So that's, like the easiest, most obvious audience that you can capture online. And who's that? Well, 25% of, believe it or not, Facebook users are between the age of 25 and 35. Right. So that's your low hanging fruit. The boomers, though, I think make up like 10%. Yeah, and they grow constantly. I mean, they're constantly growing and they have um, more income to spend mm -hmm. um, on this type of thing. And wellness for them, because we have... I'm going to generalize, but so many of us have so many more aches and pains. So if yeah. you're trying to stay well and you're, you know, you're trying to stay healthy and you're exercising to be able to come back. I did a three mile walk yesterday up a mountain and back down again. <laughs> and the first thing I did when I came back was take one of my CBD gummies because yeah. I knew, um, and over the weekend I did, um, it was only like two miles, but when I came back, I hadn't done one in a while. And so mm -hmm. I was really kind of, um, tightening up and I had some capsules CBD capsules that had actually um, some more milligrams a higher milligram count mm -hmm. I took those and now this is just for me this is not any medical information anything this is just for me mm -hmm. but I you know I took those and within 10 minutes the my muscles had relaxed enough that I was I was no longer in pain and that was great so I think that, and you know, when I, when I, if I'm going to go for a walk with the dog for two miles, the minute I come back, he's 12. So he's a boomer too, as far as I'm concerned. But anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I immediately give him his CBD. Um, so I'll wait until I know that we're coming back because the, the anti-inflammatory properties help. That's just yep. the bottom line. They help. So, it and helps. that's, that's a great thing. And, and it helps in various categories, too. So to your point, Diane, you have people at different stages of life. And so they're going to need it for different things. So you mentioned Happy V. This is our relief CBD. And it's basically for menstrual discomfort, menstrual pain relief. And the, the, the funny thing is, though, you know, you a lot of people were preconditioned as just like humanity and society and the access that we have to so many products to want like instant relief, right? Like right. instant results. So I have a headache, I take a Tylenol or an over-the-counter right. drug, my headache's gone in 20 minutes. Right. With, with CBD, 
we've found and maybe and maybe you you know you can tell us differently if you've seen it differently but that it's a continuous use yes. and sort of incrementing it into your lifestyle little by little then in the long run you'll see some really tremendous benefits in absolutely. terms of pain relief anti-inflammatory etc absolutely and i think that um because i take it every day um, I may time it differently based on what my activity is going to be for that day. Or, or do I know that we have a super stressful day and I'm going to need a little bit to come down so I know I can sleep that night. That's huge. Um, yep. So I think that, you know, those things are really, really important. And when you're talking about women's wellness and you're talking about sexuality, we change over the years. So right. there's, there's products out there for that. Uh, Jordan, I am going to bring you back in here. So. <laughs> but it's like, I'll just yeah. get back now. And, I want to um, hear the segue here. <laughs> all this is going to be important for the Mrs. Jordan for next year, just so you know this. Anyway, um, yeah. so let's. <laughs> but Jordan, I think you too. You you um, you've seen what's been what's been happening with CBD and that target audience. You've really been working on that as well for MC because it's so important for us, right? Yeah, for sure. And, you know, when you're looking at it and beginning to introduce that digital marketing into your strategy, you have to be looking at who is on your different platforms. I mean, Diane, you mentioned boomers, kind of the ignored, um, but now up and coming. So and you've been, ignored. Yes. Yeah, right. <laughs> you've been beating this drum that, hey, you know, we use this. I'm stuff. like, yes. I mean, but, they're my easiest sell of my friends. Absolutely, right. Right. You know, the yeah. people on your Facebook page, they may not be the same people on your Instagram page. So right. how are you going to cater your message to those two separate audiences? You know, how do you sell the same product? And Tati, maybe this is where you come in. You know, how do you sell the same product to one group of people who are looking at, you know, your page on Facebook to another, you know, totally different segment of people who still find that product useful, but on Instagram too? So for people watching, how you know what would you suggest to strategize, you know, so that they can do that successfully? So that's a great question, Jordan. And we see it in not only products, but also services. So mm -hmm. oftentimes we think about marketing as like marketing a tangible thing, right? But sometimes it is like MNC a service. So what you the exercise that you want to do is understanding who your target audiences are and then creating personas. And this is an activity that we went through in BizHack. It's something that I encourage any of my students or clients to work on. Um, and one of those things that you will find out is as you create personas, your personas consume content differently on different platforms. Right. So you may have somebody who consumes most of their content on Twitter. So how do you capture with only 160 characters their attention versus on Instagram, the first two seconds of a video has got to capture that guy's attention. And understanding the pain points, the messaging, what they want to hear is key. And building out the personas helps you do that. Absolutely. And I want to encourage anybody who's watching uh, right now live, you can ask Tati a question, just pop it into the chat. Uh, we have her, I think, until the top of the hour. Are you, are you going to join us for the entire? I will be here until three, yes. Yay, that's awesome. That's fantastic. Yeah. So please uh, feel free to pop in, um, ask your questions, absolutely get involved in the conversation. And, oh, you know, I, do have, I do have to say, um, so I'm in a manufacturing facility. That's where I work, where we manufacture, meh, there we go, this product mm -hmm. and, and some other nutraceuticals. And I'm also based out of Miami, Florida. And I don't know if you guys have heard, but there's rumors of a hurricane potentially making its way over here. So we've got some pretty nasty weather. So the only thing, the only reason why I won't be on is if for some reason I lose internet connection. But aside oh, from that, you got me until the hour. Is Ada, is Ada coming towards you? So it might. Unfortunately, I think it hit landfall or is expected to hit landfall in Nicaragua. Um, right. And and then depending on how that goes. It and then it's wobbling, go. right? Yeah. yeah. It's wobbling. Because so it could go back into the Gulf or come around and hit you. Is that what that is? Yeah. And so oh. it's like 80 degrees outside and so humid. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. And like raining on and off. So 
I'm just I, waiting. I, I'm waiting internet. for my next snowstorm on the top of the mountain in Conifer. So <laughs> that's my that's my next thing. So let's keep the positive momentum going here um, with your brand through PR and digital marketing through COVID cycles. Yeah. It, it you know it's so important to do that because. You outlined some great strategies, I think, Tati, about how you can get started with this. But a lot of people get started and then they kind of hit that rut. They're like, what do I do next? You know, oh, I've got yeah, this yeah. downtime. Um, how do we, you know, stay productive and keep this, you know, momentum going? And I wanted to point out that a Forbes article I read recently showed that 62% of small businesses have experienced a decrease in revenue directly related to COVID-19 this past spring and summer. So yeah. if those sales are going down, you know, the panic level is going up, am I going to make it? And I, that's a really scary thing for a lot of people. But that being said, you know, this is where we kind of weave in the digital marketing because so many more people are online now, right. 50 to 70% increase in the amount of people spending time online because there's nothing else you can do during that period of time. And if you think about that number, 50 to 70% during the spring and summer, what what's going to happen as the weather gets colder? Of course, not in Florida. You guys are so lucky. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's a weird exception. <laughs> right. But as the weather gets colder for, you know, the most, the rest of the country, essentially, into fall and winter time, you are going to continue to see that number climb, I would think. So, you know, Diane, we have done some of this at MNC and Sarah's wonderful work on the website uh, exemplifies right. this, but there are things that you can do as a small business owner to kind of help get yourself noticed as people are, you know, Googling and, and sniffing around social media and doing all sorts of other stuff online. Right. So it's basically, it's basically a move the stairs moment. I mean, truly right. this is a move. This Yes. We're all, you know, revenues down for a lot of people um, and even companies who have shut down, um, and and maybe even closed. And maybe you're like, should I start a new company? What should I be doing? There are opportunities out there, and you have to think about what are those opportunities. So, um, Tati, let's talk a little first about SEO work uh, and what you should be doing as far as that goes. Yeah, so actually, that's a great question, particularly with my category, because we deal with products that are not shoppable products. And what do I mean by shoppable products? So you have items like clothing and attire and accessory that you swipe through a catalog or what we used to do, window walk, you know, in <laughs> in, in the mall, window shop, um, and you stumble upon something that you like. Um, I'm in a category that's specifically in the women's wellness category. We focus on vaginal health and usually you have some kind of an indicator that you need to search for a product that solves that issue. So right. it's very searchable. So keywords and keyword search terms are very, very important to not only understand what those are for your brand and your product, but also to include those and incorporate those in your website. So, um, or in our case, we also sell our products on Amazon. So on Amazon, we also want to be sure that we're ranking for those keywords. But updating your website with blogs, adding content that's relevant. Google every single day is becoming so much smarter and so much better at identifying true and authentic websites and content versus keyword stuffers, which is basically right. just plugging in a bunch of words to hope that your ranking goes up, that's not going to work in the long run. Like you need true strategy. There's no way to hack it. Would you say that you should think about how to educate um, your, your um, potential customers? What are their, what are their biggest questions? And you can just go on Google and find out what their biggest questions are. Write content that adds something to the conversation and then go back and look at that content and look at the keywords and make sure that it's um, the keywords are in there, but they're in there in an appropriate and authentic way. Is it, do you think that's kind of like the three step process there? Yeah. So I, I definitely think that understanding how the topics are being searched is number one. And there's plenty of tools, but you could start with Google, like literally just type, what is, and you know how sometimes what is will auto populate and fill in. Right. Mm -hmm. That's a great way to start. And right. so if you put in what is CBD, you're going to get, Google's going to give you 
four or five questions and they're the most the most common questions that are asked about CBD. Is that correct? Exactly, exactly. And those recommended searches also vary by not even geographical location, but by your IP address. Right. So Google knows how you're searching and what you're searching and will recommend in your search terms certain answers before you even ask them. So we're talking next level sophisticated marketing, which is also a little scary, but it helps it helps the consumer orient their search and ultimately bring them to the right product or the right service that they're looking for. You know, every time we do one of these uh, vlogs slash podcasts slash, slash blogs, um, we come up with what we think people care about. And then we go on Google and we put the questions in that we think they would ask and see what else pops up so that we know that we're now honing in on what the most searched questions were as regarding whatever the topic is, right, Jordan? I mean, that's how we put this together. Yeah. And, you know, for us, it's using those keywords and trying to link back to what's already ranking on our website. And I know that's this is kind of next level stuff <laughs> for somebody but, just but getting wait, into the I, digital know, marketing. I have to say, I'm not next level in any way, shape, or form <laughs> when it comes to website SEO. Um, but I have learned that three steps, you know, put in what you think they want to know, see what Google says they really want to know and then write content that answers those questions and then add in that thing that you thought was so interesting that maybe they haven't even thought of, but people are now coming to you and they're getting that new con that new content. They're getting that new information that takes it, that, that changes your thought leadership, raises your thought leadership, shows your expertise, helps them, which is the most important thing mm -hmm. that whatever you're putting out there is helping the people that are watching. And then, making sure that you go over and you look at the keyword list that's right next to your search anyway and say, oh, this is how, th these are how it's, it's this way. This is the order that those words were put in. So maybe it's not just CBD, maybe it's CBD oil. Okay, that makes sense to me. Maybe I'm going to put CBD oil in instead of just CBD a couple times. I'm not going to stuff it, but I'm going to think about, you know, this is, this is what they're looking for. Let's give them just like if you had a storefront um, and you know what people want, you're going to put it in the front of the store to bring them in. Or if you're in the supermarket and you know what people want, you're going to put it on sale in the front of the store so that people will walk in and now they have the whole rest of the store and they're going to find things that they didn't even know that they wanted uh, because of how you, you've laid it out. So it's, it's the same idea, only it's on the digital platform. And I have to kind of take it back to, you know, where I started when you talk about things that have changed in my 60 years, it's just unbelievable as far as the, the way we think about things now that we never thought about before. But the bottom line is you want to be able to get people interested in what you're doing and you want to show that you're an expert in that topic and you need to be the expert in that topic. Tati, would you agree? I agree. And I, it's funny how you, you created a little formula, but it's true. I mean, those are the steps. Understand what's being searched, deliver it in the content, and then make sure that you're refining the way that it's being searched. Um, and to that point, I have a funny story. So one of our, one of our products is a prebiotic probiotic combo for gut and vaginal health. Uh -huh. And one of the search terms that inevitably comes up often for us is vaginal probiotic. And you'd be surprised at how many people search vaginal N-O-L. Oh, so, interesting. So we've actually, in some of our blogs, even included vaginal N-O-L and then like a parentheses, it's actually spelled vaginal for all of you, but now we're ranking for that. So... What there a are hack. hacks like that with exactly what a exactly. cool hack. Yeah. <laughs> and then if you understand how your how your customer base is searching, or maybe they slipped a typo in or whatever, that still can help you ranking. And it can also help you educate your consumers, right? It's NA NA. Right. And it doesn't have to be, I mean, I think when 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 I heard we were gonna start doing SEO, it's like, oh you know, basically <laughs> The shade just came down. I'm like, thank goodness I have Sarah and Jordan because I don't know anything about this. 
but it's my whole and I think it's the and we had BizHack, which was great to help us. But you know, as a former journalist, boiling it down to how it's manageable and understandable. And here's the three things that will get you started. Because yes, you could go down the rabbit hole of SEO and never come out again, but you don't have to. You can make such a difference with a couple tweaks. The same with social media. You can make such a difference by having you know, those buckets and being consistent and by thinking passionately about what your message is. Um, and that you know, it's, it's not, Marketing isn't all about selling and PR isn't all isn't all about reputation. It's about trying to figure out what people want as far as information so that you know people buy from those who they know, like, and trust. And so that's marketing and PR kind of put together right there. I mean, that is how it works. So I think that's really, really important. Now, I, before we get out of this, I do want to touch on email a bit. Um, Jordan, you want to talk a little bit and ask Tati some questions on that? Yeah, for sure. I mean, when you're talking about email marketing, it's one of those things where you're not always selling stuff. I mean, Diane talked pretty um, at length about, you know, here's how MNC, you know, writes our blogs and here's how we're trying to provide content for people who are looking for it. That content you can then repurpose from your blog into an email marketing campaign, but it's not... It's not like a cheesy sales pitch, you know, especially during COVID. It's not necessarily, you know, what your customer base wants to be bombarded with constantly, especially if, you know, they're they're one of those people who are furloughed or um, has been laid off and they're out of work at this point. They, they just want, you know, a little bit of touch base, right? So how does that work as, you know, you are trying to represent your brand, but also not push people away who may be in a bad spot? Yeah, so I think having the right, you mentioned cadence, like mm -hmm. having the right cadence is key. Um, but I actually, every day I become more and more enamored with email marketing. So before we used to think of like, oh, email, spammy, like let me just put, dump all of those into my junk mail. And uh, something beautiful is shifting in that brands are being forced or they just don't have a choice. They have to start delivering free quality content. Right. And if you're a subject matter expert, then you have that content. You just need to package it up and deliver it. That's it. And there's a difference between spilling the secret sauce and delivering just enough to pique your audience's interest, teach them something, and then reel them in because they want to learn more because they trust you. And that's what you create with email marketing. Sure, you can drop in a promo here and there and things like that, but that's the value in email marketing. You have access to their inbox. What something they look at every single day, consume information. So that's precious, that's precious real estate in terms of a person's like con information consumption. And it's free. It's free. Yes. And I think, you know. When we're talking about the, the CBD industry, things are changing so quickly that helping people understand first the basics, because I still, I can't tell you the number of people who still think that CBD and, um, and THC, they don't even know what THC is, but it's pot, right? I mean, it's for, for <laughs> mine, it's pot, right? I mean, people think that and it's wrong. It's that's, it is the hemp plant. But it doesn't have THC, so it doesn't have it doesn't get you high. Although yeah. there are now companies that are making um, more blends because there's some some questions about this thing called the entourage effect, which so that's a whole nother podcast. But the point mm. is <laughs> that um, that basic CBD and that when COVID happened, um, you know, for for the dispensaries. Um, they were still, they were allowed to still be open in so many states. That was huge. So people, yeah. there's a, there's a tremendous need for education and that's a great thing. And I love to start our emails and I would say our emails get more response and we only do them once a month. They get more response than anything else that we do. And I mm -hmm. love to start with some kind of a fun story, two lines basically, but so that it's, it's very clear. This is not a sales pitch whatsoever. And then mm -hmm. go into, these are some of the things that have happened in the past month. And here's some stuff that you, if you missed it, 
you might be able to catch it here or look at it there. And, and there are things that will help you. And then I hope you have a fabulous rest of your day. And thanks for, you know, thanks for reading the email. But the email yeah. has to be fun. It has to be uplifting. It has to be somewhat inspirational. It has to be educational. And it can't be sales. I mean, and yes, you could put a promo. Like if you had a special deal, I think, Tati, don't you think that would work? If you had a deal where yeah. somebody would, was like, oh, well, maybe I will do that because that's kind of a cool thing. And I'm getting something out of it, right? Of course, of course. So I and, love that. And, and I also think that there's value in, you know, a lot of brands are doing where if you're signed up and subscribed for our emails, you have access to some special promos that, the rest of the public doesn't. And so okay. that makes you feel like a part of a special, unique group in relation to that brand. And so that's also valuable. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think well, it's important I, too to stay on top of, you know, w what's happening in the world, right? I mean, Diane, you brought this up earlier oh. with another company online and, you know, utilizing current events to connect with your target audience and be careful with that because it could bite yeah. you. But yeah. if, it, if it's kind of a sentiment that we can all get behind, um, I think that's a really valuable way to make a connection with not Absolutely. only your customers, but potential customers too. Because how often do you see something on Twitter? Where you're like, hey, that's funny. I don't follow this page, but I'm going to give it a retweet or a like. Yeah, um, I, I saw some great stuff um, with CBD companies uh, during the, well, and it's still going on, but um, yeah. on Monday and Tuesday, because people were and are, I'm um, still very stressed about what's happening and what's going to happen, what the reaction is going to be and all of that. And there was some great stuff that was put out. It was very educational, very calming, um, and but they were very relevant to what was going on in people's lives at that time. You know, with the, with a potential hurricane coming, you know, coming down to you, Tati, I yeah. would think that the, I would talk about that. I mean... And, and again, it's not selling, it's saying, man, we're, we're right there with you. It's compassionate communication at that point. Yeah, and it's being relevant. Like you said, it's being relevant. Right, I'm working off what's happening is another way to move the stairs. That's another way to have something to talk about that you really care about that will help the people that you are trying to reach out to. So I think that's really important. Yeah. All right, Jordan, we got a recap here because we're running out of time. So why don't you go ahead and do the recap? Our, our typical timekeeper is off today. To, she, she's normally telling us, all right, wrap it up, wrap it up behind yeah. the scenes. <laughs> but today, in case you missed any of the show, you can go back and listen or you can rewatch. But uh, we broke this down into three mini conversations. We talked about how you can take digital marketing, first explain what it was and how you can integrate it into existing PR plans. Then we introduced Tatiana. She's still here with us. <laughs> thank you so much. Yes, and thank you for joining us. She outlined her top three strategies on how somebody just getting into digital marketing can have some success and not be overwhelmed by the process. Right. And then finally, to wrap up the conversation, we talked about how you can keep your positive momentum going, building brand loyalty, and using PR and digital marketing in harmony to you know, keep your business going in spite of the pandemic and utilizing strategies to make sure that you're still connecting with your audience and you know, understanding where they are um, so that you're connecting with them on a, on a level that you know, they may not be getting from your competitors. All very important stuff. Well, and Tati, I want to thank you so much for joining us today. You added so much to the conversation. We really, really appreciate it. And I want to leave you with a funny story. So okay. um, I was talking to a friend yesterday. And she said, you are not, COVID has gotten to me so bad. I'm like, well, how badly could it have gotten to you? And she said, I went to Costco and I bought this beautiful orchid. And I was so excited about it because it, the, the blooms were gorgeous. And so I bought the miracle Grow, and I have been watering this orchid and fertilizing it. Yep, Tati's got one right there <laughs> for five months. And yesterday morning, she thought, those buds, they have been there forever and they have never opened. What the heck is going on? She went over. And she realized it was fake. <laughs> <laughs> I made my whole day. I love that story. Because I think that we've all been bombarded. We're all overwhelmed. We're all like, and we just want a little beauty in our life. And so yes. I just, I want to know where 
out of the water personally because I'm like, man, if you've been watering that sucker for five months, I would think that it would be by now, but that's a whole other issue. Anyway, but I just love that story. And I think it kind of exemplifies kind of how we all feel right now, right? Is that that's right. Yeah. But but we have to laugh and we have to say, we have to tell each other these crazy stories and, and enjoy it. So I want to thank you for joining Oh, go ahead, Tati. 2020 is certainly the year of moving the stairs. That's right, exactly. Move the stairs. And you know, when things don't work, find another way and try and find the levity in whatever it is. If there's any possibility that you can laugh at least once a day, you got to do it. So thank you so much for joining us for this Move the Stairs episode. We thank really appreciate it. We're here to help protect your brand, uh, build your business with strategic public relations, insider media relations and crisis communications. And we hope that you have a phenomenal day. Don't forget our downloadable, the, the content map that Jordan put together for you this week is outstanding and will really help you. And Tati, again, thank you so much for joining us today. Bye guys. Thank, thank you Tati Bye. and take care thank everybody. You, you bet.